As Power Query is gaining popularity, a lot of people are learning how to work with the user interface of Power Query. And a few of them are trying to push the limits beyond the user interface and trying to learn the language behind Power Query, that is the M language. In case you are one of such people who wants to learn the M language, this video is going to be immensely helpful because I'm going to talk about five structured ideas to help you learn the M language. All right, no further ado, you and I, my five ideas, let's go together. Idea number one, master the UI first. Now, if you work with Power Query, you obviously take a look at all of these buttons which are there up on the top. You have to understand the meaning and the working behind all of these buttons that you have in Power Query. The Home tab, the Transform tab, the Add Columns tab. There are a ton of toolkits available to you which are the forefront of the most commonly used operations in Power Query and you have to master the UI first. That's point number one. Mastering UI leads me to another topic which is you have to start to solve hard problems using the UI first. Even if the problem solving using the UI is inefficient and you're creating a lot of steps or duplicating a lot of steps, you have to do that because that is going to give you some sense of wrangling data, wrangling difficult data in Power Query. Also, the most important thing, it's going to make you absolutely apparent of the limitations of the UI of Power Query. Unless you see those limitations, you would not appreciate that why are we learning the M language. Idea number two, go from small small code to the big code. What do I mean by that? I'm going to explain to you in three parts. Part number one, you have to master creating a custom column formula that runs in each row of the data. So let's just say that I go to the add columns tab and I create a custom column right here. This custom column is the smallest version of writing the M language and whatever formula that you write right here is going to roll down into every single row of the data and is going to create some output. Now there are two benefits to this. Benefit number one is that even if the formula that you're writing is going to give you an error, the query is not going to break. Let me give you an example. Consider that we have this cost column and from the cost column, I'm trying to extract the last digit of the cost. That means I would like to extract the zero, I'd like to extract the seven and the one and the two, so on and so forth. So I can perhaps use a formula called maybe text.end, which is the synonymous to the write function in Excel. So text.end, I'm gonna maybe select the cost column and maybe extract one from there. I click on okay and that actually gives me an error. Now you can see that this formula that I wrote has resulted into an error, but the query is still working just fine. The error is contained into a single cell. That is benefit number one of creating custom columns. Benefit number two is that the custom column that you create is preceded by some M code and you do not have to worry about that. Please take a look. Here is the custom column that we added. The code that we just wrote was text.end and that's about it. Whether it gave an error or not, but that was the code that we wrote. I click on OK, but if you take a look at the formula bar, the formula bar has a bunch of code even before that, that we did not have to worry about, which is essentially saying that text.end is going to be applied to each row of a specific table. Creating custom columns has two main advantages. Advantage number one is that in case the formula gives an error, the error is contained in a single cell. So that's good about it. And the second thing is that you don't really have to worry about what code are you going to write that is going to proceed the actual formula that you're writing in the custom column. The UI takes care of that. And that's what makes it as the smallest version of writing the M language. Before we jump on to part number two, you have to post it in the comments that why did I get the error? Part number two of the small to big code is writing the formula directly in the formula bar up on the top. A lot of people don't even have the formula bar activated when they start working with Power Query. And the way to do that is that you go to the view tab and activate the formula bar from there. Now, once the formula bar is activated, you can start writing code over there. But as you're doing your user interface steps in Power Query and you're building your query, the first thing that I I will recommend you to do is to observe what code gets created when you're doing things inside of Power Query. So take a look at the code, take a look at the table name and the different 
elements of the code and you would learn from that. Now, once you start to observe, then you start to make tweaks into the formula bar rather than writing the full formula in the formula bar. The small tweaks that you make are going to give you immense confidence of writing the formula by yourself in the formula bar. And finally, part three is landing on to the big code. Where do you see the big code? If you actually go over to the advanced editor in the view tab, you take a look at the entire code structure and that is how the query is actually built. The advanced editor combined with Visual Studio Code, in my opinion, is the most profound way of writing the M language with no help whatsoever. Only when you start to feel comfortable with the formula bar will you then move to the advanced editor and you start writing the full query altogether. Idea number three, learn the structure or the syntax of how the M language is written. If you take a look at the advanced editor right here, you're going to see that if you are creating a query, the query is almost always surrounded in the let statement and in the end statement and the last step is always given as the output. So you have to learn about the structure as to how do you write the M language. Why would you have the uh, pound sign and the inverted commas? Why would you put a comma in the end of the each step and not at the last step? There are a few syntactical considerations that you have to keep in mind to learn the M language and that is what I mean by the structure of the M language. Idea number four is to understand the behavior of values and functions in Power Query. Let me give you an example. There are two different types of values in Power Query. One are primitive values and the other one are structured values. What are primitive values? Things like numbers, texts, booleans, true or falses. These are all primitive values that we have seen and worked with even in Excel in the past. Now there are structured values in Power Query. Things like lists, records, tables, data types. These are all structured values in Power Query. Now you have to understand how do these values behave? How can you manipulate a table into a list or a record into a list or a list into a record and things like that. This is going to give you fundamental understanding of how do you manipulate different objects in Power Query. The other important thing for you to learn in Power Query to master the M language are the different functions available in Power Query. Now there are like hundreds of functions available in Power Query and I do not recommend you to learn all of the functions. I would highly recommend that you pick up the most important functions that you're going to use a lot and start with those 10, 20, 30 functions and that are going to help you accommodate for 70, 80, 90 percent of the data manipulation work that you're going to do. So start with understanding values, structured values and primitive values and pick up a handful of functions, understand how do they behave and work with those functions. And the last but the most important idea is to understand the techniques of problem solving. It's very, very important for you to pick up problems from the internet, from the community side, and then start to solve those problems. Take a look at the solutions that other people have used in order to solve for those problems. Once you take a look at how people have manipulated data, how have they converted a table into a list or list into a record, your mind is going to start seeing patterns of solving problem with the data. Now, there are several things that you might have to learn specifically in order to understand problem solving. Things like recursion, things like looping, things like query folding and whatnot. And if all of what I have spoken about is sounding a bit too heavy, please don't worry. I am creating an M course in Power Query for you to be able to master the M language very, very effectively. There must be at least a hundred people who have texted me on LinkedIn, on YouTube and different social media platforms asking me, when are you producing an M language course? If everything goes well as planned, hopefully the course is going to be out very, very soon, probably by the end of September or in the middle of October. I'm seeing it on the camera, so I have to abide by the timelines that I'm giving it to you now. But in case you are interested to learn the M language from me, I would highly recommend that you sign up for the waiting list and you will be the first one to know when the course is launched. All right, that's been it. Those were my five ideas to master the M language in Power Query. Let me know at what stage are you in your M journey or in your Power Query journey at the moment. In case you have any questions, please feel free to drop in a comment. I will be glad to reply. In case you're interested in enrolling into my M course, which is going to be launched very, very soon, please do not forget to sign up for the waiting list and you shall be the first one to know when it is out. Thanks so much for sticking all around and I will catch you guys in the next video.